All right, it's almost. It's just live now. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, hey, guys, Dave from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. And today I got a trio of nerds with me, uh, some local guys from Philadelphia who are putting together some events where they're running Dungeons and Dragons nights at pubs and taverns and that kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to kick it over to you guys. We had some difficult little bit of technical difficulties getting started but we're here now so if you guys want to introduce yourselves and tell us a little about about what you guys do all right um i'll start i'm zach and uh we can get into what we do after we've all done the introductions yeah i'm aaron i'm josh and what we do is uh we play D D and uh other rpgs at bars, usually with like an upstairs area separate from the normal people, so we don't intimidate them. Um, but we, we pack them in. We get we're getting a little freeze. 30, 40 people at these things. Uh, five tables. Going and we play We're getting a little bit of freezing and lagging on your end for you guys. If you could possibly maybe turn down your bandwidth a little bit. <laughs> the killer is not as hard as. The well, we're getting no idea. So. You got you guys are getting a little lag and. Yeah. Uh, if you could turn down your bandwidth, if you like mouse around the screen, you'll see a gray bar. And it'll appear at the top. In the center there, if you go to the lines, yeah. you can open, okay. if you open that up and crank down your bandwidth. <laughs> that will help. Bandwidth? That okay. Use intelligence as a dump stat. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. We're all, we're all clearing a deck build around here. <laughs> Is that better? Uh, we we'll find out. <laughs> so, so, well, we responded. So that's a that's a good sign. Yeah. So did you get all of that? I don't I don't know how much they got. Uh, for me, it was pretty frozen. Yeah, okay. they're saying it broke up pretty bad. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll try this again. Yeah. And uh, once more with feeling. By the way, are we allowed to curse? This is important. Uh, yeah, we we do. We've been known to curse from time to time. Okay. So from time to time is more like we're from Philly. Yeah. While we breathe in, it sounds like the F word. Yeah, so, yeah, brotherly love. I got it, man. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, uh, so we are doing uh, gaming at bars, like you said, typically with an upstairs area where we can have five tables going at the same time, get about forty people total, um, and we drink, we eat, and we pretend to be wizards and warriors and until monks. yeah, and, and monks. It's a kind of warrior, I guess. It's like Better a warrior. Punchy warrior. Yeah. Fisty. Yeah. Fistical. I love fisting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, fisting yeah. is key. Yeah. Oh, I see that joke. See that? Yeah. 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 All right. Um, <laughs> so uh, we do two nights right now, and Don is the guy who created this. Yeah, Don and Fred. So yeah, two Don and Fred. Two nights ever, two nights a week, two nights a month. Two nights a month. So we have two different bars, one night a month each. It, we do the third Wednesday yeah, here at American Sardine Bar and the first Thursday at the Black Cat Tavern. Which are both located in Philadelphia. And conveniently near transit. Everything is conveniently near transit in, in Philadelphia, mostly anyway, which makes it a lot yeah. easier. At least anyway, when... I live in New Jersey, right? And we don't tra you. You can hardly oh, transit anywhere. So, <laughs> so well, I grew up, but I'm recovering. <laughs> so, how long have you guys been doing this? We're we're coming up on the one year anniversary, actually. Um, next month here at the Sardine Bar, the third Wednesday, um, November fifteenth, we are going to be. Uh, doing our one-year anniversary game. So, and for that, we have uh, Don's accrued a couple sponsors over the past year. Um, people who are excited to see us come out. We have Cobalt Press, uh, Limitless Adventure, who I believe has been with Don since almost the beginning, yeah. providing him with stuff. Good and uh, Total Party Kill just jumped in. 
And also the big one, the, the coup de gras that Dan that Don's been working for, uh, Pax Unplugged, is going to be handing out free tickets via a raffle at our game. Um, and since we're expecting it to be a little bit different than normal, we're doing a uh, draw random characters out of a hat, and we're doing a NCAA style tournament with brackets where p parties are going to battle against other parties for uh, supremacy and prizes. Now, like randomly P PvP style or like how they do in the adventures? No, they're going to kill each other. It's good battle royal <laughs> style. Okay, <laughs> PvP, gotcha. Yeah. And then the people who get eliminated, we have mega boss encounters built for them to be run by our DMs. Uh, so if you get wiped out the first round, you get to pick, do you want beholders or dragons? So you'll have powerful characters, and you'll be running up against the monsters that game masters don't throw at you because they kill the whole party. First of all, good job, man. You guys got First some all, solid, uh, solid sponsors. We happen to be friends with quite a few of those guys. Uh, Total, Total Party Kill Games, Brian Berg, we're friends with him. We've had him on the show previously. Wolfgang was just on the show um, last week, Friday, from Cobalt Press. Uh, so... Uh, we've we've also worked with uh, what is it um, the limit limitless adventures as well. I believe I believe they either have a Kickstarter going or just wrapped one up. So yeah, I'm f familiar with all those guys. So there, there's some pretty decent sponsors for something that's like I consider really local. Yeah, well it's local, but I mean it is 60 people. Like, there's about 60 different people, right? Like, yeah, we have, like, yeah. a solid group of, like, 30, and then, like, 10 who are interchangeable. Yeah, come, like a rotating Come, 60. like, every other month or so. Um, and uh, we're in a city of 1.5 million, and there's a lot of room to grow. It's a Absolutely. really big, nerdy city. And hopefully, well, so, how, how is it, like, I, wanna, I always thought this would be a cool idea, but I always felt like one of the obstacles is, like, noise in in like a bar you know a bar or pub tavern type environment that you're gonna have to contend with. but the advantage is you can shout in a bar bar pub environment when you're in your mom's basement or your kid is asleep upstairs which is my case um you can't really flip the table and demand that grognar hands back the magic sword of slaying you know but you can do that here and people get excited at the other table when they hear you being loud Ooh, right that sorry, that, that was Link's sword. That's my bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah. turn the ringtone. Okay. What kind of bar are you guys visiting? Uh, the table. Say again. Say again? I said, I said, what kind of bar are you guys visiting where they don't mind that you flip the table? Usually when I do that, some big guy shows up and escorts you out. Oh, yeah. But you know, Edlock, I think it was a turn. Actually, they have really, really heavy tables at these bars. Yeah. So Specifically for that purpose. Yeah, yeah. they bolted them down after week one. It's those are bolted down, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, no. They just look at They just look bolted down. Let's make that up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so are you guys at one of the locations right now? Yeah, we're up there right now. I don't actually have, like, expensive premium beers just lying around. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So you guys are you're co you're coming from location. Yeah. So how yeah. did this yep. all come about? Uh, Don had an idea, as far as I know. They just – he didn't get to play as much as he wanted to. And he was – he was Don. a former employee here. Was he? Yeah, was Don it? used to work here. I didn't know that. And he was friends with the general manager, Joe. Um, I, I wrote an article about this. So, okay, yeah. go on. Uh, yeah. So I have like 10 pages of notes and like 30 minutes of recorded dialogue. So Don and uh, his old gaming group were all 30s and 40s and had kids and full-time jobs and realized they were meeting every other week, then once a month, then not at all. And they kind of just had this, they could play upstairs from work. And at the time, uh, American Sardine Bar wasn't open on Wednesdays at all. So they convinced the, uh, the owner to open it up so they could play in the upstairs and just sort of like milk, make grilled cheeses and drink shots. Um, and they got like 35, 40 people the first game, just with like a couple Facebook invites that spread like wildfire. And it's been a thing ever since. Like, it's gotten bigger. There's sponsors now. Like, I mean, PAX is a big convention. Maybe the biggest at this point. Yeah. This I mean, is the first year in Philly. For general nerdery. Yeah. Right, but they, they noticed it. I mean, like, I have friends who drive all the way up to Boston for PAX normally. Yeah. So, so PAX actually approached you guys. 
No, we hollered at him. Don, Don was definitely. Don really has been uh, <laughs> nagging the outskirts of PAX for a while. Well, it's a big deal because this is the first year that PAX is going to be in Philly, and it's our first convention where it's just tabletop stuff. So it, it, it seemed like a really good, like, meeting. You know, like, we're the only people who are doing this in the city, and they're coming here to do their Unplugged event. So it just it seemed like we should really do that, you know? Oh, yeah, it's definitely a good fit. So are you guys doing anything at Unplugged? I mean, I'm, I bought tickets. I'm going to go pretend to be a wizard. <laughs> like, I'll probably be watching my kid and not going. Yes. Yeah. I'm 15 months old. It's terrible around place. I'm just going to roll five turtles and go in. Yeah. Hmm. He's got a hard on for turtles right now. Yeah, turtle power. <laughs> I told you I was going to work it in. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. We will actually be a PAX Unplugged. Um, at the Open Legend table, we are booth bearding, so uh, we'll be we'll be checking that out for sure. And we kept getting that question, like, "Are you guys going to go to Pax Plug?" And we're kind of like, "Well, I guess we have to go to this one. It's literally right in our backyard." We um we film in Woodbury, so we're only like we're only like twenty minutes out right of the city. Excuse me. Yeah, you're pretty close. Yeah, you're pretty close. Stone's throw. And my brother, who used to be part of uh, Nerdarchy, but has moved on to other things, he actually lives over in West Philly anyway. So you know, so we've always had that a bit of that connection. Yeah. Just so how many the loudest GMs do you guys get? One more time. How many GMs do you guys end up with uh, at, your, at your events? Total or, cons or total or each time? In I just in general. Uh, each time. We've got five tables going on any given night. But we have about probably eight people who can run. Eight or nine. There's usually, so the main uh, game at ASB, we have three game masters, Brian, Fred, and Don. And they're running a collaborative campaign. So they sat down, created the world and the plot line, and there's three groups of players who sometimes swap members who go out and do different things in the world that are all working towards specific uh, game events and big bads. Um, and then we usually have... Uh, a Call of Cthulhu game at one table that's been meeting almost every time. Yeah, and right then somebody's yeah. running a one shot uh, with some wackadoo system every time. <laughs> oh, wow. you guys... Pro wrestling, yeah. Buffy the Vampire uh, Slayer style survival action. Uh, there's always something silly going on. And usually two or three of the players have a one shot in their pocket in case somebody flakes out. It doesn't happen yet, but it's it like... It did happen the one time. Uh, one yeah, time. it happened the one time. The sci-fi epic okay. people All right. didn't show. And... Yeah, because they just jumped on our table and they were fine. Yeah. yeah. Some of the tables get kind of big. Some of them are kind of smaller. And then you got definitely some medium-sized ones. Like Yeah, Fred definitely manages eight players at the same time. It, it, more. I've seen them done like yeah. 15, which I... Yeah. You know, I DM and I'm like, nah. Well, the, the, biggest <laughs> I ever, the biggest I ever did was 18. That's ridiculous. How do you even do it? I would kill three of them. I would, yeah, yeah, that's what I, but I, I, would, I would write side <laughs> uh, side adventure things, okay. and I would award experience points to whoever was willing to take the party when it split to go run that little side module. Yeah, I guess um, you got to split the party at that. Yeah, point. yeah. I mean, you, you split, but it lets you split the party without having to a worry about everybody being bored while the rogue sniffs people's freaking underwear, and b the phone. Yeah, and b it lets you Someone's have like. Something. Yeah. Like the personality <laughs> conflicts resolve themselves. It's like, well, Munchkin Monk and Creepy Fighter are going to go off over here yeah. and just kill stuff and be weird about it. Is that a and jab like, at me? No, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's actually, this is a specific instance from the Planescapes game with 18 players that I ran in the 90s. I think, I think I've topped out of like 14 people at the table. And, uh, yeah, so and it becomes unwieldy at a certain point, but I like your method. Who's, who wants extra XP? Perfect. Take these guys over here and run this. <laughs> well, when you have enough people, you have people who either game mastered before or want to. And actually, at Black Cat, I'm running a game that I ran in the 90s and 2000s. I ran it as second ed, and I ran it as third ed. And I would have, essentially, like, the town would be filled with players, and I'd have adventures written. Be like, who wants to run? Your character's going to go on a solo mission, and you run an adventure here, and you run one there. But, and I'm hoping that'll take off there too. And you also said you guys have overarching plots that like everyone's kind of running through. Yeah, like the yeah. big. There was one big event that we did. Um, was 
how many months was it? The six month anniversary? I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was my six, first one. Yeah, the six month anniversary. What they did is because there's the three games that are going on um, all in the same world. Um, you can essentially flip between tables. Like I've been at every table but one so far for extended period of time, just like using the same character. And um, and during the six month anniversary one, everyone put their names in a hat. And um, because a big event happened to the world, and then um, everyone was at a random table when they were all playing the same thing and different. Like you just happened to be at this bar, you happened to be at this place when this happened, and like. Essentially, a bunch of people attacked the city that we're in, and everyone had to react in different ways, and they do, did, did different things. So it was cool because all of us were seeing the conflict from a different angle. Um, it's been nice at the easy table. Easy yeah. table? Yeah, we were fighting demons. Yeah, <laughs> demons and freaking ninja orcs riding bats. That's yeah. what you get for being a Fred's table, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad my paladin had deception. I played dead. <laughs> That's why I had the, that, the murder alley. Yep. Have you guys yes, considered bring, trying to bring in Adventure League at all? Adventure League, uh, I don't know if they want. I mean, they're, they're open to everything, but I think the idea here is this like collaborative world building sort of aspect. We've kind of bypassed the need for Adventure League because we already have people coming. Like I, I've always felt that Adventure League and then uh, what's it called the the Paizo Press Pathfinder one. Oh, the Pathfinder the, thing. The, the, yeah, Pathfinder. Or for people who can't find a game. Like, if you don't get here by 8, you get booted because there's no more seats. So, like, we're looking to grow and add more space. And it's also, we're using on our Sarkana stuff, too, which you can't yeah. use in Adventure League. Yeah, it's a lot more casual. Um, like, for instance, they have a rule here that wouldn't fly if Adventure League found out about it. If you roll a 1, you can drink the ominous shot of mysterious whiskey in the middle of the table and re-roll. <laughs> and then buy a new one for the table. Yeah, um, I mean, we're a yeah. the coast might not approve of that. I mean, have you asked them? <laughs> I feel like you kind of always get drunk at Dungeons and Dragons. Maybe that's just us. Yeah, I think most people do if they're over twenty-one. If know? they're over, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, if they're over twenty-one. All right. You, you I mean, guys could you guys could start the Adventure Leagues over twenty-one. Chat. Right, Adventure Nights or something. Yeah. Oh, Adventure actually, League you don't have to be, dark. And actually, well, like, I want to so like be clear, <laughs> you don't have to be 21 to come to this thing. They serve uh, food here. Until one, Yeah, right? but it's a bar. It doesn't matter. It's also a restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's a bar. I brought my children here. <laughs> like, yeah, but you're, that, that's a different thing. I don't want to get into that in here. Go, yeah. go, go, go game at your own risk. You may or may not get carded and, and or booted and arrested. General manager. Uh, the blue laws <laughs> let you bring uh, somebody who's under the age of 21 in here as long as you're still serving, serving food, right? Um, so the, the way that that works, if you're serving food... Scooch in, scooch in. You're yeah, like, you're like on up in the corner. This is Joe. So. We mentioned him before. Hey there. Uh, <laughs> the video law states that uh, if you're 25, you have someone under the age of 21 with you, you can act as a legal guardian. Uh, they also have a thing in, Phil in Pennsylvania called house rules, so we don't give a shit about that. We're a bar. Uh, when he can't be in the establishment. Oh. <laughs> you know, I brought my kid in here, right? Yeah, but that's different. No, children are different. Children, children are people. Yeah. They just they think it's a lot. Yeah, but like an 18 year old <laughs> and their like 25 year old brother can't just come strolling in. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the idea. All right, yeah. cool. I just knew the laws. I did not know. Oh, sure. the, yeah, uh, yeah. The house, house rules. You can, you can, yeah. you can uh, refuse service to anyone in Pennsylvania for any reason. How progressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like, like, running, like rolling funny shaped dice. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you guys got that. actual plan oh, for uh, how yeah. you write your stink. It's a bar. <laughs> yeah. Now you have this thing. Never mind. We're not going to go into the fucking liquor laws now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Argue, especially, uh, yeah. Especially somebody from Jersey where yeah. they have like yeah. their liquor laws are on shuffle. It's like, yeah. What year did you get your? What year did you get your uh, your liquor license? But those liquor stores are so nice. I, well, oh, their yeah. liquor stores oh, are so nice. But so like, nice. Yeah, the, like having bartended in Jersey, the blue laws are stupid. Yeah. <laughs> stupid. Yeah. So you guys So anyway, let's talk about games yeah. and not drinking, yeah. right? You guys have special to... events planned for Halloween. Uh, for Halloween, no, we're going to do something for the year anniversary on the 15th here at American Sardine Bar, like we said, with the PvP and PV events. Um, but other than that, I don't think we're doing anything for Halloween. Yeah, because our next game is tomorrow here. 
And uh, did, you guys, did you guys talk about all the cool stuff we're doing for for the one year event? Mm -hmm. We yeah. did. Awesome. We did. Oh, another thing we should mention that we didn't, which we should since the general manager is looking at us, there are food and drink specials just for the gamers. Yeah, you come up, you roll dice. Uh, we have discounted beer, uh, special food menu that are discounted rates, like 3 to $5 plates, things like that to share. It's fun. Yeah, yeah nice. for, the, for the event we'll have. Are they themed? Their food is good. They uh, this isn't this isn't a pile of firewood. <laughs> this is their onion rings. <laughs> like they're the size of donuts, at least. Wow, they do look like some good onion rings. So do they do uh, that? Special for the well, night? these guys have got sardines. Kind of our thing. Yeah, yeah. That, I'm a huge sardine fan myself, but but uh, those onion rings. You might be a bit here though, because it's not like. With curry and inflated raisins, and yeah, get real we get, pretentious. You get real weird with it. <laughs> <laughs> sardine bar, real pretentious. <laughs> with our canned yeah. sardines. Thanks for the fucking buzzword, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, the I said, are like drinks, dude. It's eleven thirty in the morning. <laughs> well, hey, hey, it's twelve thirty. All right. Okay, it's five o'clock somewhere. In this case, the middle of the ocean. Uh, okay. I'm starting to chime in with the, the times from everywhere's where they're at, but uh, we get a lot. We get people from all over the place. We get a lot of international, uh, as well as uh, U.S. fans as well. So it's always cool. Right at any given time, there's probably some people in in the chat from overseas. That's awesome. Cool. So the, you know, they said drink, you know, drink specials and. Um, Food specials for the game nights. So are they themed at all, or is it just their normal menu, but specials? They're like normal menu stuff uh, for the most part. Um, usually we try to like gear like the kitchen to do a couple like share plates, you know, like stuff your mom would bring down when you were a kid. Uh, for the event, we're going to go tavern themed and do like uh, soup out of like rickety metal bowls, you know, uh, see what other sort of like maybe like a meat and cheese, but we're still figuring out the the specifics on that, but it's going to be fun and more, more like more themed. So uh, you said something about rolling dice when you order. What's that about? No, I think we we're just making a joke. It wasn't yeah, a real. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, we talked yeah, about the cloths. About the, cloths. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> the shot to re-roll. Yeah. I'm very yeah. excited about that aspect of the game. Are you talking about that? The, 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 the box re-roll? I was talking about the other thing, but the, the, I was going to get to the botry roll as well. What's in, I want to. I actually want to know what's in that. Uh, what's in that in that shot glass? It doesn't change. Generally, it's whiskey. It's, I mean, whatever whiskey, whiskey the person wanted to buy, though. Whiskey. It's you drink it, you I buy Bullet it because I'm a fancy. Oh, you're a fancy Bullet. <laughs> <laughs> well, us non-fancy get Heaven Hill. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Usually, usually whiskey. I mean, I told them to surprise me. It's going to be for, tequila for, tomorrow. For your uh, non-local uh -huh. listeners, uh, I mean. Philadelphia is known for the citywide, like it's a beer and a shot of whiskey. Like that's for five dollars. It's kind of our jam. Or less, depending on you know? where you're at. Or John, if you want. I yeah, don't know. that you is want the to be thing. that guy. Like, yeah, you sound like a grandma. I do. That's what the kids say, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. It sounds like you guys are having, like having a great yeah. time with these events. Yeah, we, we are. It's they, a lot of fun. They generally have to turn a hose on us to get us out of here at night. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like it's it's fun. And you'll see people from downstairs too, like the not nerds, be intrigued mm -hmm. by like why we're having fun and seeing socially functional. <laughs> I think one of the best things about this sort of event um, is that it, the idea is that people are very inclusive. Like, there's no, you can't be at this table, you gotta go over here. There's none of that. There's none of like, oh, I've never played before. Like, there's tons of people to come. And they're like, I have no fucking clue what the hell this is. I saw it on a TV show once, or I always wanted to play, but never got knew the rules. And like, we always sit up here for like an hour before the thing starts and help people roll characters. And and we get all sorts of different types of people that come up, and we just try to throw them into a game and be like, all right, people will help you along the way. Like, we'll figure it out. We'll always write in uh, anyone who comes in and wants to play a new character yeah. at the table, find them space. It's great because, like, at a any given table, you have two people that never played before, one guy who hasn't played in since second edition, and then you've got, like, two dudes that are like, this is my only time to play when I'm not DMing, so I'm just going to be my weird bard character yeah. I always wanted to be, you know? <laughs> I still need to play that bard. So what, what are the hours? Uh, we try to roll dice at 7, 
And we let things fizzle out naturally, but it tends to end around 11, 11.30. Okay. Uh, us is usually going on a little bit longer than that. But, um, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but the, yeah, the, the games tend to wrap up around 11. It's not bad, four hours. That's the really time. time. So you yeah. said cool. about, you know, if people want to show up early and roll up early. Yeah, usually we do a character workshop like an hour. I, will, I mean, me, Don, and, and Josh here are always here like an hour beforehand, and any of us will help you roll up the character. Like, so you get so basically, you know, before the event, there's almost like an hour worth of meet and greet or yeah. character workshop, whatever you guys need at the time. Yeah. yeah. Find out what table you want to play at and yeah. like. Yeah, you always get that like middle aged guy who hasn't played since 1992. Yeah. Who yeah. comes up like, is this for real? Like. Yeah. 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 I still have my old. <laughs> I still have my old uh, second ed player's handbook. Is that still valid? Right. You're right, like, right. no, no, no. Here, sit we down. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. got you. We have a clinic for you. And then there's also the person's like, I don't know what the fuck a dwarf is, but I want to be that. Yeah. yeah. And we're like, Lauren. Beards. I'm violent and I'm beard. <laughs> Also found in your local pub. Uh, Sam Firth has a question for you guys. Do you get bonus experience if you start your adventure in the tavern? <laughs> well, the tavern right now uh, sort of was shrunk and put into someone's backpack, so we don't know where the tavern is. That sounds like a dilemma, a major dilemma in, uh, huh. in the campaign. <laughs> Wait, we have a bar on the go? I wish we had a bar. Well, no, the bar, I remember from our, from our big world event, uh, so the town that uh, everyone's teams collectively play in, we all play sort of in the same area, even if we're not playing together in different groups. Uh, the town is being ransacked, and in earnest, the, the owner and proprietor of the bar uh, shrunk the bar down, put it into his bag, and left town. So there's not actually a tavern right now. That gives a new meaning to the, to the term mini bar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad it wasn't straight edge. Yeah. <laughs> have you guys ever considered, or maybe you already have, putting together a guide for other people that would want to do something similar in, you know, in their I think, I think about Don is actually looking at making a module yes. to help with that for other Drinks and Dragons. Is are you are you asking about the actual rule set that we're playing Five E in, and like the world building stuff? Or are you asking about like how to the event make running, people... yeah, running this style event, getting people on board? Oh, board. Yeah, I think Don is interested in that. Um, who unfortunately couldn't be with us. He's, he's uh, babysitting his kid today. Um, Don is collecting all the information and basically trying to start more than I think the two drinks of dragons we have. And to do that, he's I think collecting all of the information on the the sort of world that that they, our DMs have created, uh, so that the next time we pop up, it'll be an easy like jump into. If that's sort of the direction you're thinking. Um, but as far as making an event like this work, um, right. like these two run a Pokemon League, so they can tell you it's about shit one, right? Like yeah. you guys have like an army of people. Yeah. 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 Hey, <laughs> Philadelphia Pokemon League, you can look it up. Yeah. But you've got you, 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 <laughs> but you need Keep to have like, not make. You know, yeah. like <laughs> to quote these guys, you need to have a warrior and you need to have a uh, the calm, a calm guy. Yeah. And you, you, it's, it's party planning is about the person who's going to fret about every little detail because there's 50 people who are going to fuck things up for you. And uh, then somebody that people think are problems because they're not going to tell the guy who actually cares about them. Yeah, I mean, and beyond that, if you really want to start like something this in your own area, it, the biggest thing that helps us and Drinks and Dragons and the league we run is we're all bar people. Like, I work at a bar, he works at a bar, Joe runs a bar, like, so, yeah, finding, physicist. well, right, he's a physicist, but, you know, we got problems with physics, like, I guess we have, yeah, bigger, there's a bigger, meltdown, bigger problems, I don't know, um, <laughs> I'll know where to put the shielding, but, uh, the idea is you gotta find a venue, it, you find someone that's willing to take a risk, and, because it is, at first, when you started out, it's a risk, because you're saying, based on Facebook invites, how many people you're gonna have in an event, and that's, you know how Facebook invites work. It's scary, man. Like, you could you could say there's 15 people gonna go and there's 84 people interested. What the fuck does interested mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, it's Facebook. So find a nice venue, someone who's willing to take a chance on you. And even if it's a couple tables and you're just like, we'll play in the corner, and then it gets bigger. That's a start. You can start from there. And is that is that, is that your, your primary, primary uh, way of advertising? Facebook. Yeah, yeah, so far it's yeah. worked. And word of mouth. 
Yeah, we're Stuff looking, like this. We're looking for something beyond social media, but I mean, for now, it's just been people's hobby. Like, it's just getting big to the point where, you know, Don is thinking about how to make it function at the level that it's at because you can't really have one guy managing this much stuff and have a family and a job. It's getting yeah. Lily. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, for instance, uh, the other, the second night, actually, Don just turned it over to me to run that one because it's three blocks from my house. So. Well, no, you have power? I now, now I have power. You were there when you gave it to me. <laughs> you were How there. drunk were you? <laughs> Is that a question? I mean, I know how drunk you were at the end because I was that drunk too, but you were there 10 minutes before me. I don't know. Did don't he, know did how he, did he have went. a sword? Did he knight you? Yeah. Like, I, I know Don looks like a consummate wizard, apparently. He's <laughs> very kind eyes. <laughs> so, so at, the, at this point, I want to jump into the chat for uh, roll call. And that's basically we just you know see see where people are watching from. We've got forty-ish eh, people hanging out in the chat today with us. Not bad for a Tuesday afternoon. So guys, roll call. Uh, guys, roll call. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do though is once we actually start the roll call, I'll probably end up muting you guys as we go through it so we get the uh, feedback as much. All right, so that'll make that a little bit easier, and I will unmute you guys once we go through the roll call. So we've got Todd in Dallas. We've got Raven in coming to us from the OZ. Scott's in Wisconsin. we got Jay in Portugal. East Australia in the house with Tesmic. Lincoln's in Sweden. We've got uh, we've got California in the house with Rodrigo, usually in Utah, though. Phoenix with Haitian. Is in Fort Lauderdale. We got Maryland with Christian. Geeking on these is in Ohio. Niagara Falls in the house with Rich. Chris is in Canada East. We got Edmonton, Canada with Holtz. We've got Horace Wild is in New Providence, Nassau. We got Pittsburgh in the house, uh, or Pittsburgh, Kansas in the house with Spellhawk Press. Uncle Peter is in Toronto. We got some more Sweden with Patrick. Brian F. Uh, Brian F. is in New York City. Scratch Paper Games is in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. We've got the Netherlands in the house with Tijin. We've got Josh from Dallas. Was Washington with Elf Bait. North Carolina with William Tithis in the house as well, uh, but currently in upstate New York. So we got people coming to us from all over the place. Uh, we've got Fred, and Fred is one of your one of your own. Uh, he is in in the house as well. And uh, we got Chris, Christopher Orlando is in New Jersey, New Brunswick with Ben, and like I said, we got people going from all over the place and I'm going to try and unmute you guys now. I know I cannot see what I can't see what you have written there. I, I wonder if you guys have to unmute yourself and won't let me unmute you. I thought I would be able to unmute you from here. Are you, you are no longer muted. Yep. You think you yeah. Hear yeah. The yeah. Tones of our voices. Could not keep you guys out. So that, this all sounds awesome. It sounds like a lot of fun. Earlier when we first started, people in the chat were asking about, you know, doing yeah, something doing. Like in their own town or hoping it would come to their town or possibly franchising. So that that is why I asked about that. It's a legit question. I mean, there's nothing stopping people from doing this wherever. It's not like we have a copyright on it and we're going to come with an army of lawyers and come to your house and tell you to stop playing Dungeons and Dragons. Like, yeah, I think yeah. Don might be going for a copyright on the name so he can sell T-shirts, but that's it. Yeah, like you can just drink and play D and D. Yeah, anywhere people won't throw you out of. <laughs> God, what class would a lawyer be? Is that a warlock? Uh, yeah. No, yeah, they're definitely a charisma class. Yeah, yeah. it's totally a warlock. They're yeah. kind of evil. Uh, yeah, 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 they're warlocks. <laughs> Limited spell slots, you think, though? No, they're wizards, man, because they got to stock up on all that knowledge. I don't think so. I think yeah, they're probably they definitely good. spend a lot of time reading books. They got to yeah. memorize all the right things for the case. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Wizards, wizards all the way. But I feel like a Columbo. I can't imagine lawyer. a teleporting sword lawyer. I well, just, that's just not one a form of like the war lawyer. Okay, war <laughs> lawyers are completely. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm a divorce lawyer. <laughs> I just say things that make the party split. <laughs> oh my god. I I can. Uh, I, sorry. I just, he's got all the healing magic. Yeah, but he used the N-word at the table. Like, 
I can just imagine where the, the chat's going to go with, with this now. They're saying Bard. Bard is your lawyer. Yeah. I mean, it's a charisma-based class, I feel like. You know? Completely worthless, too. No, Bards are great. What are you talking about? Bards are good. Yeah, sure. What? What? You, you must be thinking what? of another edition. This is the first edition. Actually, that's, I guess you guys are playing 5e, right? You guys are playing 5e. Yeah, yeah, 5e. Yeah, they're good in 5e. They were bad in 3, they are bad in 4, they were amazing in 2. I still, played in Bard in 3, yeah. 5. Second and Bard is <laughs> still the most powerful character class ever to drop. Oh, you're no, no, you're, I think you're thinking of first edition Bard, where well, you had to like take levels in like six levels, and, pieces, and then you actually got the big the Bard. Got the oh, yeah. Like you just had your bard abilities, like counter song, immunity to, to to musical charm, and then just like, yeah, so I can cast disintegrate, use a great sword, wear chainmail, and climb walls. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, but now they can sing really nice. Like, your Thacko is pissed. Who cares? It's plus five, bitch. I can't believe we're talking about Thacko right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when <laughs> you grew up in, and if I don't talk about it, my therapist says. I'm gonna relive it. Yeah, and it'll internalize it somehow. Yeah, yeah. I get you. We, yeah, we don't want you. We don't want you to re regress. That's for sure. <laughs> so you said you you're, you're talking about branching out more nights. Um, yeah, I, mean, I think, I, I think yeah. ideally we'll see one in West Philly, and one in uh, North Philly or Northeast Philly. Yeah, West would be the next move. Yeah, West would be the next move because it's the easiest for us to get to, yeah, and then hopefully. Decent group of people that play. It's like yeah. three colleges out there that probably have. Yeah, it's literally college. called University City. Yeah. Have you guys uh, considered, uh, thought of trying to team up with any of the game game stores? I know there's a bunch of them. Or is that going to be, you know, like the Oh, show? no, we definitely have talked to um, uh, uh, Red Caps. Um, I'm, I, I know Red Caps. there's the other Red Caps. Like that. And, like, they do, a, they do a night, but they're pulling a lot of for lack of a better term, kids, kids around 21. Yeah. It's mostly their our bread and butter crowd. So, like, and we made sure that the nights are not on the same night. So that way we're not, you know, if someone wants to do both. Yeah. You know, Monday and Wednesday are still, or Monday and uh, Tuesday are still open. And, you know, it's not yeah. like you can bring your booze into the game shop. They generally frown upon that. No, no, Ben doesn't like that. No. That's <laughs> <laughs> why they invented camelbacks or flat. Just go to the bathroom and hide your shame. <laughs> Go to the bathroom and hide your shame. You sound like a junkie. <laughs> I know, that's why it's so it like, like a game, game store with like, like a hole drilled in the wall. That's the, like, uh, <laughs> like, uh, there's there's like 40 people watching us you right just now. Walk up like dice roll through the hole. <laughs> like, son of a bitch, critical hit. Yo, what if you. Your deck there save? was. Now, now we're down to 10. I'm kidding. Uh, I feel like a con constitution save would be worse than this if we're talking about saves, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Philly, oh, you were saying so. now, now people are going to learn that Philly nerds are the worst kind of nerd. Yeah, yeah. Philly people are the worst people, and we're fucking proud of it. Yeah. Yeah, we're the worst. I apologize. Like, I'm surprised we didn't beat up the Pope when he showed. He's not an Eagles fan. To be fair, this guy, this Pope is not an Eagles fan. Well, yeah. soccer fan. I mean, we, like, threw batteries at Santa. What do you expect? I know. Like, that's, yeah. what I, that's what I mean. Like, you know, we're, well, this is we're, the first, like, less evil Pope. This one's, like, not Pat. Like, what was the one right before this? Palpatine. Palpatine, Palpatine Pope? Palpatine? Yeah. Oh, man, we would have battered Palpatine. his ass. Yeah, yeah we would have. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, that's right. The guy so, can throw lightning, throw batteries at him. Let's see how that works for you. Yeah, you just throw him down a big shoot. That's what he did, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm surprised you guys don't try and like advertise. Right. The game advertise. Well, that's why we have you, right? Well, I'm not well, really a game shop. But <laughs> <laughs> of the 40 people watching, like three of them might be within. Uh, Within driving distance of Philadelphia, so. Well, I mean, you can recruit these forty people. They're like your minion. Yeah, Netherlands well, guy. They can Why go they out and spread the word. Or you know, if they happen to be visiting Philadelphia, now they know to look for drinks and dragons. Dragons. Well, I mean, I'm not going to catch a plane every Tuesday and you know fly out to Spokane, Washington, just to roll dice with a bunch of nerds. Like, I ain't got that kind of you know, scratch lying around. No. no. <laughs> you, got, you guys don't have the drinks or dra drinks and dragons jet yet. No. Yeah, as soon as we get a jet, I mean, like, yeah. yeah. That, that's something to look forward to in year two. Yeah, we're just, we're very low on the wizard level. We haven't got to, like, plane shift yet or any of those cool abilities where you can just teleport around. Oh, it. yeah, just Dimension Door to Spokane. So, are you guys... So, are you capacity? <laughs> Sorry. What's your maximum capacity as far as how many people you can have in, have yeah, in your game nights? You can fit, probably fit 50 per night. Fire Marshal um, says 50. Fire Marshal says 50 for here. 
<laughs> yeah, the other one's got a bigger a bigger venue upstairs. Uh, Not probably, as many tables, probably, more space. 50, yeah. Yeah. But fifty is probably like the sweet spot number where we won't run out of game masters. We won't won't run, yeah, won't run out of seats. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. And then if it gets big enough, we'll just kick everybody out of the bottom of the bar, too. Like, no, this is not your local <laughs> if it gets bar big enough, we'll This just... is Feyrun's local bar. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at that point, we just open another spot. If, if there's people who are willing yeah. to run it, like, like Don is the guy who, who started this thing. But, like, realistically, like, we just started playing there. Like, we started early. Like, I was at the second one. Josh was at the second one ever. But, and then we got folded in there all the time and i guess we're more organized than the other idiots or something yeah, i don't that's, know i came in at number that's five scary. yeah and it just just facebook <laughs> was like something in your area that you might like literally no one i know came here oh that's like, right I, I, oh, that's no right. one here but facebook was just like hey bro yeah you like getting drunk <laughs> you like rolling dice right do you want to play a paladin i hate your paladin so much <laughs> what? he's so awesome it's paladin Everyone hates paladins. You bet my monk, he hates paladins. He hates authority. Well, there's four people who have no idea what you're talking about. So how often do you guys get the normies, you know, coming upstairs? Maybe again. Curious. One more time. Sorry. All I heard was like a handshake and then curious. Fast and furious. movies, but how often how often do you guys get uh the normies coming upstairs that they're curious? Uh, more often than not, I mean, I'd say at least every time we get at least one new people. Yeah, yeah. at least yeah. one. Yeah, I've never two. seen a night where there wasn't at least one person who's never rolled a weird, yeah. a weird die before. Yeah. yeah, we usually get at least one per. Now, are they? Do you think they're generally people that just happen to be at the bar, hanging out, and like, what is, what is this, what is, what is no. all the flattering going on upstairs? I mean, maybe once or twice, and they don't say anything. But I think most of these people, like D and D, is getting cool now. Like it's not like nerds can come out of their basements and shit. Yeah, like, people want to have sex with Thor. Like, yeah, like that is a thing that exists now. I mean, I think like, what the hell is wrong with you, lady? Well, first off, that's, like, that's for kids. That's comic book. Now, Rule thirty-four, man. Let's just move on. You know, Chris is <laughs> <Hill's laughs> sexually alive, right? Like. <laughs> Says yeah, it. it's okay to well, have sex with Thor. No, but I mean, like D and D is 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 cool now. Yeah, it's no longer like this thing that people should be ashamed of. Um, so, like, yeah, we get people who are like, yeah, I always wanted to try this, but there was a stigma attached to it, or they, you know, didn't know anybody who played, oh, or, um, oh yeah, yeah. things like that. So yeah, people want to show up and just try it out. <laughs> I don't know where that exactly is coming from. It's probably a, a bunch of different spots, like Stranger Things and. Vin Diesel, yeah, he's hip, right? He plays yeah, D&D. I believe he was in the Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being, a video. being a nerd is definitely a lot more chic than it, than it was when we were coming up. And I find from from our perspective of doing a YouTube channels, we get a lot of people that used the game and they're coming back. They're, coming back. They're, bringing, they're bringing their kids into it now. And you know, and the next generation of gamers are coming up as well. So, so we're growing. You have things like Wizards of the Coast. They have their own D and D Twitch channel now. They stream D and D five days a week. So there, there's more. You know, it's out there more and more. And you know, it's great for the hobby. We're just getting, you know, we're getting more exposure and new people into it, and people that look different too. So we got all kinds of people playing games now. You got like. He got kind of like the grognards like me in here gaming, and then I got a bunch of friends that are like in LA, and they're all like the Hollywood type people, and they're playing games. You know, we even got people in Philly playing games all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Who and thought Philly people could read, right? Like, yeah, wow, right. we still can. But yeah, uh, no Five E helps a lot with that too when it comes to D and D. Like Five E is at least the best edition that's come out in. For God. I know it's, it's the yeah. only edition that's been great. It's really good, and it's here's the it's thing: easy. it's, it's, it's easy to pick up, but it still has the complexity that people want. It doesn't play like a video game, like yeah. some of the older editions do. Or like, can we yeah. just remember how many feats there were in three point five? Can you just, Let's not go back there. Can we just think about that for a second? Yeah, it was terrifying. <laughs> like, yeah, because like fourth was was like a board game. Yeah, yeah or like World of Warcraft. But it was it was, it was it was like a board game or a video game. But it was it was intimidating to a new person because it's just about. Moving around, three five was sort of you just had your character arc where it's like, okay, I'm gonna build this guy, 
and I have to start working now for where I'm going to be at level 14, or I can't do anything. Like, I'm not a math guy. I can't no. think that yeah. far ahead. No, no. It, was, it, it handled like like a Japanese RPG video game, where like you're looking at like your level tree, and you're like, I got to be there. It was worse than that too, yeah. because and then, your level tree was as big as this fucking room, yeah. and you needed to figure out what you needed to do for level 12 or level one, or you would have fucked it up yeah. somehow. And then, <laughs> and then like in second edition, which I loved, I but it. it was just flavor, right? Like. There was a completely different rule set for every different thing. Like, oh, do you want to socially interact? Break out 2d6. Oh, you're going to attack? Better roll high. Oh, you're going to succeed at a skill check? Better roll low on that same die. I think one of my, that won't confuse I anybody. I think my favorite D&D &D book I ever saw was a buddy of mine showed me the second edition book for social encounters involving the opposite sex. It was like a nerd's guide to dating. That was third ed. Oh, was this third? That was that was the worst thing I have ever seen. <laughs> creepy and gross. It was so bad. It I, was I don't so know the name bad. of it, but if, if you ever want to feel a little bit sick and laugh at the same time, there's, there's X. Oh, how I got, I got yeah. maybe I have some maybe bad news, maybe good news for you. Uh, there's I don't know if it's still going on. I don't know if it kicked or not, but there was a, a Kickstarter for like the next. Yo, D and D erotica book. <laughs> you go on. <laughs> Roll D twenty. Tell her her hair's pretty. Yeah. I just, just Google Dungeons and Dragons with safe search off, and you'll get plenty in the image. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> like, I, don't do that. Don't, don't don't do that at home, kids. Don't. <laughs> or do that. At home. Depending on how brave you are. Yeah. Is what it comes cool. down to. So, yeah. Yeah. what is the most obscure game that's been played at one of your tables? Shit, that, that, that thing that most apocalyptic. No, 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 no. Wrestling, 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 wrestling game was not. There was this no? guy who, the guy, oh, yeah, 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 the dude who, <laughs> so, uh, with a 1970s RPG that was designed by MIT students who were angry at Gary Gygax. <laughs> 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 it didn't have a name. It was just like MIT RPG like, role playing game project. <laughs> it was the fucking weirdest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> My understanding is that it was easy to learn and it ran smoothly. So, <laughs> thank you, MIT. Take but that, I was, but take I, I that was running, Gary. I was running my game, so all I have is my my friends who play. Because actually, none of my personal friends who came played in my oh. game. They were all like, "This sounds way better than fighting <laughs> dinosaur necromancers." Like, fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> Sepulchre the Dino Man was the greatest camping ever. <laughs> this one, there was that wrestling one that was yeah, really that cool. yeah. fun though. Yeah, the wrestling one seemed cool. Uh, well, I totally wasn't expecting the the underground MIT RPG game. That's for oh, sure. Oh, this guy was yeah. all about it. He yeah, had like uh, he had like dot matrix printouts and shit. <laughs> like, he was, yeah, he was in like, there. Like a briefcase full of all D and D. He's been waiting for this moment like, since the seventies. He designed it. Yeah, like as he was pushing sixty, he's like, no, this is the only good game. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Hey man, if you want to get weird with it, do it. Yeah, you know? I, I agree. It's better than first edit and Rune Quest. You're correct. <laughs> I think my mental picture of how this played out is way funnier and better than what I could have. Oh no, it played no, out pretty much exactly pretty, how you if you're thought, imagining yeah. it. Like this dude's this dude's uh, goatee. He looked either like a uh, model from the '90s who never changed his facial hair, or a wizard, or sorry, not a wizard, a magician. Yeah. Oh, like, like the one that. <laughs> like 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 pulls rabbits out of hats. Okay. And like, okay. Illusions. Yeah. <laughs> that is an illusionist, sir. <laughs> top hat. No, because he, he was like a top hat and like. You guys you can know. fill any rest of development yeah. quotes again there. It's fine. <laughs> so, well. so, so, how many GMs did you say you guys got? So how many GMs so did you say five, you guys five tables yeah. run at the same time. That's pretty impressive. Sometimes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. A lot of yelling, a lot, lot of yelling over. Come, come into frame. Yeah. Come into frame. You're like the weird. You're like. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. Personal people, space. You can sit on my lap. <laughs> it's it's not, okay. Lap sharing is okay. Yeah, we all smell, we all smell very really nice. good. Yeah. As a group, smell. not just the four of us as a group united, yeah. five tables running concurrently. Mm. Best smell. Yeah, and it's actually, not like you think. I want to point out too that this group is actually pretty inclusive. Like we oh, had, yeah, we're super we have, we have old people, young people, yeah. leathery biker types. <laughs> I don't think you can um, call them old people. <laughs> we're inclusive as hell. We got the old people. <laughs> <laughs> Bring like, your Mima out the D and D. Like, you would not think it was a D and D group if there weren't screens up, because yeah. your your traditional D and D has has the beard. I don't know if you've met you, but we we share. We share a bond here, um, but it's not just 
bearded white guys. Bearded white dudes arguing no, that, about imaginary. Everything. About you imaginary walk in and you magic. think you're at a, a town hearing meeting. You've got, you've got like young trans people. You've got like older black guys. You've got you know, the whole, the whole, men, the whole women. Time. Yeah. Couples coming here on their one date night out of the month, and they don't. It's have their South kids. Philly, like it, uh, as a neighborhood yeah. already is yeah. is a pretty mixed bag, and like everyone comes out. Yeah. Google gentrification. Part. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, he's right. I, he's right. Like it is nice. We have a good number of, of women that show up, and I feel like that is a good barometer to show how yeah. like inclusive you are. Because, I mean, if any yeah. of you people are watching are women and try to get into gaming groups, it. it it can be a, it can be a fucking trial. It can be, like, a, shit show, it can be yeah. a shit show. Yeah, it's not, there are some nasty nerds. There's some there. nasty and nerds. They do not there. come. They'll come once and they'll run up against one of the strong personalities, either yeah. in our group here. Why did you look at me? Why did you look at me? Why did you the look other at game me? masters. I, I looked at everyone. Yeah, um, that's all of us. And those those beardy <laughs> dudes were the guys who don't seem to get that this is a fun thing. Mm -hmm. They don't come back. They uh, and they don't stress everybody else out. They get yeah. shut down very well. We're very mindful. Yeah. Of the fact that alcohol and personalities are involved. Sometimes and, it's a chaotic mix. Yeah, but it's it always wraps up, and everybody always comes back who's at the table with that guy, except for that guy. Yeah, and, trying to take a picture. Yeah, we always put links in the description to whatever the guests have going on, and for you guys, it's a Facebook page as well as an article you were featured in, and that's mm -hmm. one of the things that struck me too when I was looking at at the article was there's pictures from one of your events and it, it was very diverse and there's different people there hanging out, which is, is always cool. And like I said, that's one of the things that's really cool about the hobby now is it is drawing more and more people into it. You know, it's not, it's not just the glears anymore. So it's, yeah. it's, no, it's for the better too, because you yeah. get better stories that way when it comes in game, you get, yeah. it's more interesting that way. It's not just like, the, into like a, a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's know? yeah, and it's 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 nice to have different personalities and backgrounds on it because it's you just have five slightly autistic dudes who want to yeah. feel powerful. Yeah. You get a really just yeah. one sided story where it's like everybody is just a twenty in one stat. Then you get you know, then Wizards of the Coast have to write a book about how to talk to girls. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Fred, 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 right in the chat, which chat, which is one of your guys, I believe. So he's got yeah. two couples that come out as a date night to the to uh, drinks and dragons to his table. I, I think they almost died during the big campaign. Or at least one of them. Uh, oh no! The, I lost eleven hundred gold to the one. Yeah, couple. the one. Yes, yes. So. <laughs> he doesn't forget. <laughs> yeah, not when it yes, comes to the money. one character picture pocket. The other one actually shape shifted into a dire wolf and acted as my mount as we rode around mauling crap. So you okay. mounted someone's girlfriend. Yeah, well, yeah, he won't let me, he won't let me stop about that either. Yeah, that's <laughs> terrible. His wife's like... <laughs> <laughs> can't, we did go fine. Tell, tell me again how you rode around on my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Doggy stop. But, but, yeah. I mean, I pretty much... I bet you didn't take handle animals. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the things, well, the things well, that well, happen in a D&D. &D. Well, <laughs> actually, yeah. someone asked... My girlfriend comes out and plays. So, but yeah, it's people do it. You just wanted to tell everyone in the world that you had a girlfriend and feel proud about yourself. Mm. <laughs> That's true. I do. Yeah. Some of us just have. She comes all the way from Canada. Yeah, yeah. we met in Niagara Falls. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> How's that green card procedure? <laughs> are you are you trying to get a green card there and escape? Um, no. Uh, we're right up oh, on yeah. the yeah. Reverse right search up now. Yeah. Fantasy yeah. aside, the real world is not looking great. <laughs> you need to escape this like. I have practiced with swords and guns for so long, I am stoked about this apocalypse. <laughs> like, suddenly, LARPing and hobby shooting doesn't seem like such stupid hobbies, does it? No. Fair point. Fair point. Okay. Well, yeah. we're, we're <laughs> the after, after the Doomsday Prepper is okay, but We're up on the hour mark, guys, so I'm going to have to cut you off. What do you guys, you know, parting words before we go? I already did the total power. Okay. Do it again. We're supposed to get to it. No. Yeah, if you can make it, yeah. it's worth coming out. And if you can't make it, find one and make it in your own town. Steal a car. The more people that like this, the better <laughs> it is for the hobby. And honestly, it's a great, cheap way to have fun. And, and you can uh, never trust a num. Like, yeah. honestly, you find a bar with a nice upstairs area that wants to make some extra money, and you bring them a whole crowd that they never knew existed. That easy. Sounds good. I'm, yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. If you're getting a lot of people who are saying, how do we start this in our own town, just do it. Yeah. Honestly, the number one way to do it is just, just, just do it. We Ask had an idea. Owners. We jumped in. We found four people. 
Yeah. And it just blew out from there. If it's just you and your and your friends who you normally play with playing in a bar and telling other people that they can join that game until you have enough room for two tables, start there. You know, it's you no, bar, no bar owner in his right mind is going to turn away people who sit in one place for five hours and drink. drink. And eat and eat and eat. <laughs> They're like, well, there you go. Yeah. Oh, what's the average? What's the average tab for you guys uh, during one of these? Oh, uh, that depends. So if you just stick to the like special, show. I don't know how like, about that. They have a shot of beer special <laughs> called the Citywide here in Philly. That's uh, a beer and a shot of whiskey for five dollars or less. It's five dollars here. Yeah. Um, so you can get really wrecked for I'm twenty like bucks. Twenty bucks. Not that we recommend that as a business. Yeah. Not that we recommend that. Not the general manager recommends <laughs> that. His head in. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> The food here is fantastic, and it's all a la carte style, so you can get a big thing of onion rings that, that feeds you for cheap, or you can get an artisanal grilled cheese with blackberry yeah. jam. Do you hear how he said artisanal? Yeah, yeah that was like weird. seething. It was yeah. seething. Oh. So like most people spend about 20 bucks. Yeah, I spend like 60 because I'm fat and I have a tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, like, if you want to catch a light buzz, you yeah. can do it. For ten dollars, yep. if you want to get a great meal and a light buzz, you can do it for twenty. Yeah, so there and that go. goes for the other one. If you're around, if you're around the Philadelphia area and you're looking for a good night out with some D and D, some good food and some some drinks, go check it out. You know the information is in the description. I want to thank you guys for coming on. Thanks for everyone hanging out for it with us today. And until next time, guys. Take care. Thanks.